good deal. Once again, it's an, another opportunity to have your Bible questions and answers. This is the Bible study time, and you need to get your pen, pencil, paper, a Bible, and call someone, tell someone. It is time to have a Bible study. This week we are concluding a very, very important Bible lesson study. And I want to ask of you that you go back from lesson 18, where you would study a special day. And then you can move forward and continue from lesson 18 19, 20, 21, 22. And you see how important this is a very important lesson study. So I'm just encouraging you, encouraging you to, as a matter of fact, you can go back to 17, lesson number 17. All right, but before we go further, let us have a word of prayer. Thank you, dear Father, for this opportunity to study your words. We appreciate the importance of this lesson and we ask once more that you would take full charge be with those who will take the time to study may they be blessed even as they allow your holy spirit to direct in Jesus' name we pray and thanks amen so we are looking at Bible questions and answers, lesson number 22. And we are looking at part four of the change of the Sabbath. The change of the Sabbath. And this is a concluding study on the change of the Sabbath. So uh, this is part four, which tells you that there was part one, two, and three before. Please pay attention. Now the question, what testimony does Eusebius bear on this subject? And obviously we are speaking about the change of the Sabbath. And Eusebius had to be an important person uh, as it regards to the change of the Sabbath. So let's listen to what he's saying. He said, all things whatsoever that it was duty to do on the Sabbath, we the church have transferred to the Lord's day. And that's uh, from a translation from the Eusebius uh, in a commentary on the Psalms in Mingni, and that is in the Patrologia Graca, Volume 3, Columns 1171-1172. Now here we had to note the change of the Sabbath was the result of the combined efforts of the church and state, and it took centuries to accomplish it. Eusebius of Caesarea, um, between the 270 to 338, was a noted bishop of the church, biographer and flatterer of Constantine, and the refuted father of ecclesiastical history. Very important information. You can research it. Go to Google and research it. Question number two. By what church council was the observant of the seventh day forbidden and Sunday observance enjoyed? By what church council was the observance of the seventh day forbidden and Sunday observance enjoined. The answers say here the Council of Laodicea in Asia Minor in the fourth century. Now we need to note here that Canon 29 reads Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, Sabbatu, the Saturday, but shall work on that day. But the Lord's day they shall especially honor, and as being Christians shall, if possible, do no work on that day. If, however, they are found Judaizing, 
they shall be shut out. Anatema from Christ. And that's according to Charles Joseph Keffel, A History of the Councils of the Church, Volume 2, and that is the 1896 English edition, page 316. So what was done at the Council of Laodicea was but one of the steps by which the change of the Sabbath was effected. It was looked back upon as the first church council to forbid Sabbath observance and enjoin Sunday rest as far as possible. But it was not so strict as later decrees. Different writers give conflicting dates for this council of Laodicea. The exact date is unknown, but may be placed generally somewhere between the years 343 and 381. And again, the reference is Hefel, volume 2, page 290. Eight. Question number three. What do Catholics say of Protestant Sunday keepers? What do Catholics say of Protestant Sunday keepers? And they are obeying the authority of the Catholic Church. They are obeying the authority of the Catholic Church. And we need to note here, for ages all Christian nations look to the Catholic Church as we have seen. The various states enforce by law the ordinances as to worship and cessation of labor on Sunday. Protestantism in discarding the authority of the Church has no good reason for its Sunday theory and ought logically to keep Saturday as the Sabbath. The state in passing laws for the due sanctification of Sunday is unwittingly acknowledging the authority of the Catholic Church and carrying out more or less faithfully its prescriptions. The Sunday as a day of the week set apart for the obligatory public worship of Almighty God to be sanctified by a suspension of all servile labor, trade and worldly avocations, and by exercises of devotion is purely a creation of the Catholic Church. And here the reference is the American Catholic Quarterly Review, January 1883, pages 152 and 139. These are very, very, very profound statements. Again, you can research it for yourself. You can go into Google. Question number four. What determines whose servants we are? What determines whose servants we are? And our answer comes from Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. It says, Knowing not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether to sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Very, very important pronouncement. Question number five. When asked about to Satan, how did Christ reply? When asked about to Satan, how did Christ reply? Matthew chapter 4, verse 10 gives us the answer. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Very, very important. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Question number six. What kind of worship does the Savior call 
that which is not according to God's commandment? What kind of worship does the Savior call that which is not according to God's commandment? Matthew chapter 15 verse 9 provides us with the answer. Matthew 15 9 tells us, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So what we are seeing here is that when you are worshiping uh, and obeying individuals, not according to God's commandment, it is in vain because it is the doctrines of men. Very, very important. Last but not least, what appeal did Elijah make to apostate Israel? What appeal did Elijah make to apostate Israel? The answer comes from 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. And the statement here and the question, how long or T between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. So, we need to note here, in times of ignorance, God winks at that which otherwise would be sin. But when light comes, he commands men everywhere to repent. That's according to Acts 17.30. The period during which the saints times and the law of God were to be in the hands of the papacy has expired according to Daniel 7.25 the true light on the Sabbath question is now shining and God is sending a message to the world calling upon men to fear and worship him and to return to observance to the observance of his holy rest day the seventh day Sabbath, according to Revelation 14, 6 to 12. So, you have had it. We see how the Sabbath has been changed, and it is time now for us to understand that we have a responsibility to keep God's holy sabbath as he would have pronounced i want to pray that we would have listened carefully i want to suggest or encourage you to go back to the study from chapter 7 uh, from lesson 17 a special day and come forward again and understand the change of the Sabbath. In the time of ignorance, the Lord would wink. But now that you have the opportunity to know better, God expects you to be obedient. Merciful Father, God of love, thank you for these lessons. May we understand what is required of us May we allow you to be in control of our lives so that we be doing what is right and pleasing in your sight, even for being and worshiping you on your Sabbath day. May we take the opportunity to encourage someone else to do likewise. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.